The first reading for today's Mass taken from the 18th chapter of the book of Genesis and the gospel story from Luke's 10th chapter that we have just heard both deal with hospitality. In Genesis, Abraham and Sarah are the hosts, as are the sisters Martha and Mary in the gospel story. Hospitality was central to the culture of ancient Israel and the early church. And when these readings come up in the C cycle of the lectionary every three years, we might usually spend our time reflecting on how Abraham and Sarah's hospitality resulted in their being blessed in their old age with their guests' promise that within a year they would have a son. Or perhaps we focus on the different responses of Martha and Mary to Jesus' presence in their home, challenging us to balance action with contemplation. Scripture scholar Sister Barbara Reed has a unique perspective on this story. She suggests that perhaps the gospel is addressing an entirely different question facing the early church, namely the role of women as ministers. She writes, the incident in today's gospel is not about preparing a meal. Instead, Martha shows how burdened her heart is over the conflicts surrounding women's exercise of their ministries in the early church. Some people were greatly in favor of women evangelizers and teachers, women prophets, women heads of the churches. However, others argued that a woman's place was in the home and that speaking and ministering in the public sphere belonged to the men. She concludes that Luke takes the latter position, giving it validity by placing approval of the silent Mary on Jesus' lips. Nothing new, is it? This is something that certainly was not limited to the early church, but is an issue with which we continue to grapple to this day. However, I would like to suggest another possible theme for our reflection today, and I would like to base it on Andrei Rublev's 15th century icon known as the Trinity. This is perhaps the most beloved and famous of all medieval Russian icons. While it is entitled the Trinity, which in a Christian context refers, of course, to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it has also been interpreted over the years as the three total strangers who appeared outside of Abram's tent in the heat of the day. Some go so far as to see the spindly shrub in the background as the terebinth or turpentine tree in the story. However, there is no sign in the icon of Abraham as the frantic host or waiter. Today, rather than focusing our on our welcoming and receiving Jesus into our lives, I would like to focus on the fact that from the very beginning of creation, we have been the recipients of God's hospitality. Our very first parents, Adam and Eve, received God's invitation to share life with him. And time and time again, God called the people Israel, inviting them into a special relationship with him. This divine hospitality is seen throughout the ministry of Jesus. His first miracle in John's gospel is changing water into wine so a wedding feast could continue. All four gospels recount Jesus hosting and feeding the multitudes who came out to hear him teach. He continually saw the last the least and the lost in the crowd who were invisible to others and was moved to heal and bless them. He welcomed little children who had no status in society at that time and made room for them on his lap, blessing and embracing them. And Jesus' last act before he died was to feed his friends at the Last Supper, a meal that continues to today. Yes, God's hospitality always comes first and is always there. And there are certain characteristics to this hospitality. First, it is universal, all-inclusive. No one, no one is left out. Secondly, it is altruistic and self-giving. And finally, it is healing and life-giving. Recognizing this hospitality that has been given to us in such abundance, how are we to respond? First of all, with gratitude. 
which enables us to recognize how we have been freely and generously been given so much. How everything we have in life, including life itself, is a gift from God. Jesus assures us that God's constant care will always be there when he says, do not say, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? What are we to wear? Your heavenly Father knows what you need, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given you as well. Then, recognizing this gracious abundance with which we are gifted, our second response must be generosity, seeking to share these unlimited gifts with others. And our giving must mirror God's hospitality by being all-inclusive, altruistic, and life-giving. In other words, we're not called to offer hospitality to God, but accepting hospitality from God, we are sent to extend it to others. And who knows? Perhaps someday we may find three strangers outside our tent, as Abram did. And perhaps like him, we may, as the letter to the Hebrew says, entertain angels without knowing it. Oh, look at the icon again. They do have wings. <laughs>